What's going on guys and welcome to Sports Square. My name's Ty and today we're going to be revisiting the 2019 St. Louis Blues and their long journey to the Stanley Cup. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to start off this video by saying that the St. Louis Blues in the 2017-18 season were rather disappointing as following a second round exit to the Nashville Predators in the 2017 Stanley Cup playoffs, they were expected to make another decent run towards the Cup, but instead they ended up missing the playoffs by one point after a strong start to the 2017-2018 season. We are going to start off this video by talking about the moves that the Blues made in the 2018 NHL offseason. Free agent signings Tyler Bozak, David Perron, and St. Louis native Patrick Maroon were made to improve a forward core that struggled to score a majority of the prior season. Their biggest move of the offseason, however, was the acquisition of Ryan O'Reilly, giving the Blues the number one center that they had been lacking for many years. Going into the season, the Blues had high expectations following a down year and a great offseason. They were expected to contend with Nashville and Winnipeg for the Central Division title. Early on, the Blues were really struggling, as most hockey fans know. They entered November 19th, 2018 with a 7-9-3 record, and following an embarrassing defeat to the Los Angeles Kings, coach Mike Yo was fired and replaced by Craig Berube on an interim basis. Despite the coaching change, the Blues continued to struggle through November and December. They entered 2019 with the worst record in the entire National Hockey League at a measly 15-18-4. On January 7th, the struggling Blues marched into Philadelphia, where it was the first NHL start for rookie goaltender Jordan Binnington. The Blues ended up winning 3-0. This was the start of something special. On a side note that will make sense later, following the win in Philadelphia, the Blues went to a bar in Philadelphia to watch the 2019 NFC wildcard game between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Chicago Bears. In the bar, the Blues players heard the song Gloria, sung by Laura Branigan, who had unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Anyways, the Blues players loved the song and started playing it after every win. Getting back into the season, the Blues started to improve their play heading into the All-Star break, but it was after the All-Star break that the Blues really turned a corner. They ended up going on an 11-game winning streak, pushing them up the standings and into the playoff hunt. The Blues ended the regular season with 99 points, good enough for third in the Central Division, actually tying them for second with Winnipeg and finishing one point behind Nashville, but they lost the tiebreaker with Winnipeg, so they ended up in third. The leading goal scorer for the team was Vladimir Tarasenko with 33 goals, whereas newcomer Ryan O'Reilly read the team with 77 points. Heading into the playoffs, the Blues had earned themselves a first-round date with the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets, led by electrifying forwards Patrick Laine and Mark Scheifele, appeared to be a tough task for the surging Blues. The Blues would end up winning the first two games in Winnipeg, each by one goal to take a commanding 2-0 series lead back to St. Louis. This series was not going to be as easy as it seemed, as Winnipeg won Game 3 in convincing fashion and Game 4 off an overtime goal from Kyle Connor. In Game 5, Winnipeg held a 2-0 lead heading into the third period. Quickly, the Blues got a goal back on the power play through Ryan O'Reilly. With about six minutes remaining, Braden Shen tied the game at two. The game appeared to be heading to overtime, but a bad turnover by Jacob Truba led to Jaden Schwartz scoring the go-ahead goal with 15 seconds remaining. This goal stunned the crowd, and the Blues were heading home with a 3-2 series lead. In Game 6, Jaden Schwartz's hat trick led the way for the Blues to start off with a 3-0 lead. Winnipeg ended up answering with two goals themselves, but it was too late, and the Blues were heading to the second round following a 3-2 home victory over the Winnipeg Jets, and they ended up winning the series four games to two. Moving on, the Blues entered Round 2 as the favorites over the Dallas Stars, who had defeated the Nashville Predators in six games, although it still looked to be a tough task. The Blues started the series off with a 3-2 home win in Game 1, but soon after, Dallas leveled the series following a convincing 4-2 win in St. Louis. The Blues then win a back-and-forth Game 3 in Dallas to retake the series lead. Dallas again leveled the series after Game 4 and ended up winning a pivotal Game 5 in St. Louis as well. As the series headed back to Dallas for Game 6, the Blues faced elimination for the first time in the playoffs thus far. However, this Blues team is different than the past Blues teams. They conventionally win Game 6 in Dallas to force a Game 7 back in their own barn. 
Game 7 in St. Louis, do or die for this Blues team. 13 and a half minutes in, a Vince Dunn shot from the point beats Bishop to give the Blues the lead, but Max Zuccarello quickly answered for Dallas with some help from the linesman's skate. Ben Bishop proceeded to save Dallas multiple times in the game headed into overtime, 1-1. to The Blues continued to pile on shots in overtime, but could not beat Ben Bishop. That was until Pat Maroon tipped in a Robert Thomas shot that hit the post in double overtime. The hometown hero scored the goal to knock out Dallas and allowed the Blues to go to the conference final. The Blues knocking out Dallas for the second time in the past three years as they also won the series in seven games against Dallas in their 2016 run as well. The Blues' Western Conference final opponent was none other than the San Jose Sharks, a rematch of the 2016 Western Conference finals, where the Sharks won the series in six games. The Sharks kept a majority of that team together, but also added Eric Carlson, so they were a force to be reckoned with. The Sharks easily won Game 1, 6 goals to 3, meaning the Blues trailed the series 1-0, to zero, and it was the Blues' first time losing a Game 1 so far in this playoff run. The Blues win Game 2 thanks to a second-period go-ahead goal by Robert Bortuzzo, of all people. Game 3, and the Sharks had a 2-1, to one, sorry, 2-0 and 3-1 to one leads early on in the game. However, a great second period gave the Blues a 4-3 to three lead heading into the third. That lead would stay until one minute and one second remaining in the third, where Logan Couture would tie the game up. In overtime, with the help of a controversial hand pass, Eric Carlson won it for the Sharks in overtime, giving the Sharks a 2-1 to one series lead. Now this is the moment for the Blues where it all changed, because after this goal, they were furious with the referees, and I believe this was the turning point that really fueled the Blues the rest of the way to the Stanley Cup. Game 4 was approaching, and this was pretty much a must-win game for the Blues. Win, and the series is even. Lose, and trail 3-1 to one going back to San Jose. The Blues ended up winning a tight game, 2-1, to one, to even the series. In Game 5, the Blues ended up winning 5-0 to zero in San Jose against a demoralized and injured Sharks team. The Blues ended up easily winning Game 6 as well to clinch their first Stanley Cup final appearance since 1970. The Blues' Stanley Cup final opponent was none other than the Boston Bruins, the team that had swept the Blues en route to winning the Stanley Cup in 1970. You guys might remember that as the famous Bobby Orr goal where he was in the air as he scored it in overtime. The Blues entered the series as heavy underdogs as Boston was entering the series on a six-game winning streak, having won their final two games in the second round against Columbus, as well as sweeping the Carolina Hurricanes in the Eastern Conference Final. Game one, and the Blues got off to a 2-0 lead thanks to goals by Braden Shen and Vladdy Tarasenko. It was not to be that night as Boston ended up winning after scoring four unanswered goals. Game two, and after trading goals twice, the Blues and Bruins were heading to overtime. In overtime, it was all Blues. Carl Gunnarsson scored the game-winning overtime goal just three minutes into overtime to even the series at one. The story after this goal was that Carl Gunnarsson had talked to Craig Berube in the bathroom in between the third period and the start of overtime, and he told Chief, as the Blues like to call their coach, that he just needed one more chance and he was going to score the winner. Game three, we head to St. Louis for its first Stanley Cup final game in 49 years. The Bruins ended up spoiling the party, cruising to a 7-2 victory, as well as heading off to a 4-0 lead, and this would give them the 2-1 series lead. Game four, and similar to game two, the Blues and Bruins trade goals until Ryan O'Reilly breaks the tie in the third period, giving the Blues their second win in this series and leveling it up 2-2 heading back to Boston. The Blues headed back to Boston with the series tied. In the third period, with the Blues leading 1-0, Tyler Bozak appeared to have tripped Nola Chari, but there was no penalty given, and on the same play, David Perron doubled the Blues' advantage. And this just triggered the Boston Bruins fans, and the place erupted with boos after this, but the Blues would end up holding on to win the game 2-1 despite a late goal by Jake DeBrusque to take the 3-2 series lead back to St. Louis for the chance to win the Stanley Cup. Time for Game 6, and the Blues again were crushed at home, this time 5-1. Although the score was 5-1, the game was relatively close up until the end of the third period, as Boston only held a 1-0 lead at the second intermission. The Stanley Cup winner would be decided by a do-or-die Game 7. 
Game 7, Cup on the Line. The game started with the Bruins dominating the Blues in shots. The Blues at one point had gone 16 minutes without a shot on goal. However, with 3.14 left in the first period, Ryan O'Reilly deflected a Jay Bomeister shot to give the Blues the lead. With 8 seconds left in the period, Alex Petrangelo scored to give the Blues a 2-0 lead heading into intermission. This goal was mainly due to Brad Marchand not knowing when to change and giving Jaden Schwartz a free win to a puck battle who dropped it off right to Petrangelo who ends up scoring on the backhand. After period 2, the score remained 2-0. Midway through the third period, Jordan Bennington stuffed Joakim Nordstrom right in front of the net to keep the Blues two goals ahead. Soon after, Tarasenko and Shen combined to give the Blues a three-goal cushion. With 439 Left in the game, Zach Sanford scored the Blues' fourth goal. Matt Grizzlick scored a consolation goal for Boston, but it was too little too late, and the St. Louis Blues won their first Stanley Cup after a 52-year wait. Ryan O'Reilly ends up winning the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoff MVP, and Alex Petrangelo becomes the first Blues player and first Blues captain to lift the Stanley Cup. The Blues' 2019 Stanley Cup run was unlike any other. They went from last in the NHL to Stanley Cup champions in only half a year. As a Blues fan myself, I will never forget this incredible journey and all the steps this team took in 2018-19. The Blues are forever the Stanley Cup champions. That's all there is for this video. If you guys enjoyed this revisit, make sure to like and subscribe and tell me what team I should revisit next. Any sport I am willing to do. Anyways, that's all I have. I'll see you guys later and play Gloria, baby.